Okay, hello everybody. Hi, I'm Miron. I'm Gal. And uh, we are a married couple and running together uh, Love Made Simple and the Couple Center. We are very excited to be here with you today. Uh, we are going to discuss the best topic, which is communication and what's happened to couples when they're not communicating well. And yeah. Yeah, I mean, communication is the number one issue all couples have. Like when we, when couples come to work with us, I would say 95%, you know, of, of couples say like we're having communication issue. Right. So that's a big deal. And that's why we're also dedicating this month right. uh, to talking about communication from yeah. different angles. Yeah. And having like uh, 18 years of relationship with each other and two kids and a lot of ups and downs through our journey together. Um, we became therapists, couples counselors, and um, dedicating our life to support couples based on our personal experience, but also on um, all the research that's been done and um, teaching in schools. And just want to share with you what we learned. Um, so this topic is what we see almost every day with um, our couples in our clinic. And um, it's a very hot topic, so we want to share it more about it with you. And so one of the first things to understand about it, which is really important, is that when couples have, and every couple has some communication issues, whether big or small, it feels as if like we're talking over many different things. Like there are many different topics that don't work for us and we're trying to talk about them. And sometimes we get stuck and we don't understand each other. And it feels there's so many things to resolve. Yeah. But actually what we know, you know, from working with so many couples over the years is that it's not the issue that's important. It's actually the way you talk to each other and the way you talk to each other comes back to a certain pattern. Mm. Like every couple has a certain pattern of how they talk to each other and that pattern repeats itself no matter what the topic is. Right. So if you know to recognize the pattern, how to work with this, then you, you're able to do, you know, improve basically all of your communication with each other. Right. You know how many times you just look at your partner and you already know that you're about to step into a fight or a disagreement or, um, you know, they're rolling their eyes or they just turn their body away and you just know, here we go again, we're in the same thing. And that's because you have the same pattern that it's repetitive and you have usually one or two issues that's on the bottom of it and it has different way that it's manifesting your relationship. Right. So you already know that you know the music is the same, even right. if you're talking about different things. And that's exactly what we want to talk about today. And, and the most common pattern that couples have, so not everybody has it, but the most common, like by far, right. is what's called the pursuer distancer. And we're going to uh, role play this for a moment, right. you know, because we definitely used to have that and used to get stuck there. And sometimes we still do, but we have a lot better tools of how to do it. Right. Um, and we want you to see it as an example and see if it, you relate to it. Yeah. You know? so that, that, that's true examples that used to happen many years ago when we kind of like, you know, started our work together um, in our relationship. And um, it used to be, sometimes it still happened, but we know how to go through it. But Gal used to come back home, um, not in the time that he promised. And that's the way it looked like. Well... Here we go again, you promised you would be at home at 6, and now it's 7, and that's upsetting. I'm tired of you being late all the time when you're saying like you will be on time. It's just one hour. I mean, you know that I have to finish stuff up in the office. Sometimes I don't finish exactly all the time. It just takes me a little bit of moment to just finish everything, everything I got to do so I can come home and be here. Right, but then I prepare dinner, and I have to prepare the kids, and I'm, you know, taking care of all the other things too. So if you said you'll be at six, at least call me or tell me something, but it just feels like you don't care. But I don't understand what you want from me. I do this for us also. Like, I'm not just working for myself. Like, you know, I'm providing, I mean, I know you're too, but I'm, you know, I'm kind of doing more of this work and I, I'm doing it for us. Like, why are you, why are you criticizing me? You know, it's just a little bit late. It's not just a little bit late. It's just like you're not prioritizing us, me, the family. It's like work is always more important. And yes, we're providing for the family, yes, and me too. But at one point of the day, you have to just finish it. And if you said it'd be six, let it be six. It can't be seven or eight. I, you know, uh, okay, I'm sorry about that, but I don't understand why you're so critical of me. And, you know, what do you mean I'm not prioritizing us? I mean, I'm doing everything for us, for, you know, for, for our family. And it just feels like, you know, there's always this criticism where, you know, like whatever I do is just doesn't feel like it works for you. 
it, it doesn't work when you say something and not following your your promises it's just really painful to 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 see that you don't care that you actually don't care and i i don't know what to do about it anymore we talked about it so many times i'm just tired of it and i want you to i, I don't care like it feels like you you don't care about me like you don't appreciate everything i do everything i do for us is like if i just do a little bit go a little bit beyond the line it seems like you already have something to say for me and then whatever i do is just not enough again okay so that's the way it used to be look like and that's exhausting i have to say <laughs> <laughs> you've been trying it on right now right it's exhausting but we're we're wondering that you know some of you watching this actually might feel familiar and might and if it does just type it down like let's see what you think about it's familiar for you do you feel like you know something about that what what do you sense right yeah. and you might identify more with my role or more with your own role right. i mean it doesn't have to be uh, also gender based and it right. doesn't have to be heterosexual couples Not like the all. same dynamics of pursuer distance are happening in all couples actually right. so basically i'm more on the side of um that's want the connection that's want to figure out right now what's going on that feel like he doesn't care about me and i'm not a priority and for you well for me it feels like you know you don't appreciate me mm -hmm. like you don't value me and um it feels like uh, like whatever i'm gonna do is gonna just feel like it's falling short and like i'm not i'm not able to make you happy make mm -hmm. you satisfied and it feels like i'm failing mm -hmm. in that way mm -hmm. in, in my role right and and so it seems it seems as if this argument it seems as if it's about being late right right and and then people try to kind of solve that problem by saying okay so next time i'll call you before before i come home or next time i'll make sure right. it's not more than 15 minutes they're and looking then for solutions they're looking for a solution mm -hmm. exactly yeah instead of getting into what is in the core what's under the fight under the being late so for me again is not feeling cared for like he doesn't care about me or about the family and he's prioritizing everything else Right. So if he's if we want to get into that place, no matter if he will try to call me, we won't really solve the problem. I will still feel like he's not prioritizing me. Right. So behind the complaint about not being there the whole you know at time, it feels like you're not feeling prioritized. You're not feeling right. I care about you. Mm -hmm. And then when you complain about that, for me it feels like you don't appreciate, you don't value mm -hmm. what I do. Right. So I don't get space to be myself or to do things that I think are, are important mm -hmm. and I don't feel good enough. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can just play for a moment how we do it in the ideal way, like how we actually getting into the core instead of staying on the surface. Yes, okay. but, be but before we do, we do that, I want to just say one more thing. I mm -hmm. want to say, how does it get reinforced, sure. right? Like it's not just that we're doing this, it gets reinforced because um, the more Leron complains, you know, the more Leron in this role, the role of the pursuer, someone who wants to come closer, who wants the connection stronger. But, but when she's upset, she, she criticizes, right? Mm -hmm. She goes after, she is not vulnerable, right? And then what happens to me, I'm in the role of the distancer. They want to kind of play things down or doesn't really want to engage or kind of want to get away from the conversation. And so I, I, I either blame back or I try to just withdraw and, and stop the conversation. And then it gets reinforced because the more I stop the conversation, the more the own or the pursuer in that case, right. you know, gets more angry. But the more they get more angry, the more the distancer, my role in this case, get like, well, I can't talk to you. That's that's crazy. Like, that's too much. Like, why would I even engage in this? It's not going to work. And so then I distance more and then it gets reinforced. Right. And that's usually where a couple get stuck in the relationship. They have a pattern and one of them doing more of what their tendency is. And the other one does the same. And then they get stuck because they're repeating what they think will help them to break through. Mm -hmm. It's actually not really helpful because you are different. If I'm, um, I'm actually wanted to be more connected and resolve it and find more solutions, God wants the opposite at that moment because he's just like, what do you want from me? Why are you so criticizing? And he's shutting down. When he shut down, I'm trying harder because where are you? You're shutting down. And then he's just like going away. And I'm after him and he's pulling and just running after himself. So coming back into what is underneath that is what is important. So, um, again, you're coming home late. Like you said you would come at six, but now it's seven. What's wrong? Like again? Sounds like you're really frustrated about something. Yes, I am frustrated. I'm frustrated because I feel like you don't care about me. And when you don't care about me, I feel alone. 
And when I feel alone, I feel like we're not a team. I, I hear you. I mean, it's really not my experience, and it's actually hard to hear that that's what you're thinking. But I, I understand that you're, you know, you're feeling as if, like, I don't care, you know, if I come home late. Yeah. And it's not what I want you to feel. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's not like I don't appreciate what you do for us and the times that's you investing in, in, you know, moving things forward and working hard. I really appreciate that. But at the same time, it just feels like you're prioritizing that over me and it's hurtful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't mean to. Like, I don't mean to prioritize this over you. Because sometimes I'm, I'm done with my work and I have a few things to finish up. And actually, I think if I finish it up, I'll be able to be more available, you know, because otherwise it will be on my mind. I will feel like it's not finished. I got to finish this last email. I got to make a phone call. And so I stay a little longer and maybe I need to set the expectation differently with you. But it's really not because I don't care. Okay. So just take a moment and see how that feels different. It it's really feels different for us, like just having like a more open, vulnerable communication because vulnerability is the key when you're not vulnerable and um, you attack or you become defensive, there is no way you can connect with each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our way also to look at that is, is through the lens of um, connection and autonomy. Mm -hmm. So um, we one say person- We said that there are, like, there are like four basic needs in a relationship. You know, we call it the four relationship desires. And those are two of them, connection and autonomy. Mm -hmm. Right. So the connection side basically is a pursuer that's actually want more connection. I want to be closer to Gal. I want to feel him closer. I want to know that he's there for me. So if I feel that he's not there, even energetically, I'm after him because otherwise I feel alone or lonely in the relationship. So I'm trying harder. And as more as I try harder, if he's not being in his vulnerable place, he just feels like he wants to retreat. He wants to move farther away from me and go to his space. Just go even work harder. Mm -hmm. and disappear into that, right? Yeah, and that's more the autonomy side. That right. he needs more autonomy. autonomy. I want space to be myself. I right. want uh, appreciation, actually, to feel like I'm appreciated for who I am and what's my contribution. Right. Now, of course, both of us want both of those things. Like, we both want, you know, connection and autonomy. But a lot of time what happens is one person plays that role more than the other. So one person has stronger need for connection or these days or in general. And so they end up taking the connection role or the pursuer role, right? And then the other person has more of a need for autonomy, and so they need more space, and they end up distancing a little bit. And then can, people can get polarized around that. Right. And we have to remember that it's a spectrum, yeah, connection and autonomy. I'm more, I used to be very, very much on the far side of the connection, and God used to be very far on the other side of the autonomy. And over the years, as more as we worked about ourselves and about our relationship, we were able to come closer and closer to each other. And now sometimes I'm actually needing more the autonomy and mm -hmm. be more independent and be farther away. And when usually I need that gal trying to come closer and look for me, where are you? Where are you disappeared? Like I don't used to it. So sometimes we're switching roles, which is interesting because we grow together, you know, into that place in the relationship, which we can switch sometimes and still appreciate, love and care each other for how we show up mm -hmm. every day. And I want to add that this, this dynamics, this pattern can happen in a big way, like, you know, in big fights and, and arguments and misunderstanding. But it can also happen in very small ways. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm coming home in the evening today, for example, and I feel a little bit like missing the run and I'm looking for connection and I'm asking, hey, how's your day? And she's busy and needs space for herself. And she says, fine. Right. And she kind of turns away. And so then there's like this mini interaction of connection versus autonomy that's happening that could kind of creates a certain ouch, like if, if people are not recognizing it. They're like, oh, she doesn't really care, and then I move on. Yeah. But it actually doesn't feel good. So right. it's important to notice that also. Like a lot of time we say that relationship is a dance of connection and autonomy. Like sometimes you want closer, sometimes you want more space, and right. we always go through that dynamics, you know, even on a daily and weekly basis. Yeah, I just want to add one little more example um, that you, you may all relate to it. It's like when your partner comes home and they're on their phone. Or you're eating dinner together or lunch and they're on their phone and just like you right away criticizing them it's like you're your phone again again like turn off your phone and just your tone of voice my tone of voice sometimes is just like shutting the other person down instead what i'm actually really asking is for connection 
like, hey, do you mind to mm -hmm. turn off your phone because I really want to feel you, I want to connect with mm -hmm. you, I want to hear about your day, I want to just be with you together. And if I'm offering that that way, it's changing the dynamic. It's just like, now we can have a nice dinner because what's happened when I criticize? It's like, I, do you mind to turn for your phone off? Right. It's just like... That's not gonna make me right. be very nice. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's like, well, what do you want from me or whatever, yeah. right? So, so how you deliver your needs is very important. Your tone of voice, your body language, and that's a topic for a different uh, lecture. Mm. Um, but just to keep it in mind is that your needs are important and how you deliver them is even more important. Yeah. So we wanted to also update you that we're, we're gonna lead next week mm -hmm. uh, an e-mini workshop called The Art of Listening. So we, since we're on the topic of communication this month, the most important, one of the most important skills in communication is being able to listen, but really listen, listen deeply. Yeah. And we're going to have a, a workshop of an hour and a half uh, that next week on Thursday, six o'clock on uh, California time. So if you're interested, uh, kind of click here or click on this email afterwards, or go to our website, Love Made Simple, and just join us over there. We'd love to see you. And also, if you if you are finding yourself struggling more with communication issues and wanting to kind of overcome it and wanting to get closer, it's always good to check our online course. It's called Foundations of Love that you can find on our website because that's where we kind of break it down really specifically step by step what to do about it and how to overcome it and how to actually get closer to each other right. and through communication. Yeah. Thank you for being with us. We had a wonderful time. And uh, see you next week. See, see you next week, Wednesday at 12.30 in California yeah. time. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>